Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, our guest today is Joanne Douglas Brown of Queensland, Australia. Joanne Douglas Brown is an intuitive, and you can find out more about Joanne Douglas Brown and her wonderful work at joedouglasbrown.com. Welcome, Joanne Douglas Brown. Hello. Hi there, Catherine. Thank you for having me on your show. Thanks for being here. Now, Joanne Douglas Brown, what are some of the little known factors that you feel affect people's health? Um, there, are, there are so many things that affect human health, but um, there are certain things that tend to fly under the radar. Um, in the work that I do as a natural therapist, I'm able to test up for different um, toxins and heavy metals and also microbes, my, microbial overloads. Um, out of the toxins, pesticides I find are some of the uh, most insidious because people don't recognise them, people don't consider them to be a threat to human health. Um, pesticides tend to undermine our nervous system. Um, they're actually designed to shut down the nervous system of pests, but also the digestive system. So they're, they're a big threat. Also, electromagnetic radiation is underestimated in terms of being a threat as well, and with the recent upgrades to 5G. There are ways we can counteract that I'm um, having constant exposure to electromagnetic radiation, things like turning our Wi-Fi off at night, putting our phones on flight mode, that can be helpful. Um, out of all of the microorganisms, your bacteria, viruses, molds and parasites, I find the parasites are again, probably the most underestimated of all of the microbes and they can produce such an enormous range of symptoms in the body. So they can give us headaches, we can have um, emotional instability, we, they, we can get stomach cramping, and the intestinal reactions are the most common. They're the ones that we're more familiar with. We can get sugar cravings, there's a whole range. Um, some parasites can cause pimples and dairy intolerance. So, um, But then there's also the spiritual stresses where if we're operating from a limiting belief system, then that is can be far more damaging to our health than any of the physical factors. Right. Now, Joanne Douglas Brown, your work in Australia is very similar to my work. In that we're both like little detectives. And, yes. you know, and I agree with everything that you just said. You know, people are not aware of how their environment. Um, affects them. I just did a medical tutor reading a couple of weeks ago with a lady who'd been a manager on a golf course. And golf mm -hmm. courses are some of the most toxic environments because of all the chemicals that are sprayed on the grass. I've had people who are avid gardeners and they don't, they're not making a connection between the cancer they're experiencing and what they're putting in the garden. I'm a gardener myself and my garden is all organic. And yes. I agree with you about parasites. Parasites can be in any organ. So like, yes. do I look for parasites, but then where are they? And I've had clients who've had parasites even in their brain, you know, and as you said, it's very common for them to be in your digestive tract, but they can be in your kidneys. They can be in your spleen. Exactly. They can be all kinds of places. <laughs> exactly. That's where right. you don't want them to be. <laughs> now, Joanne Douglas Brown, what are microbial imbalances? Well, um, I've already touched on, on what microbes are. There's four main groupings that I tend to work with. Um, they are microscopically small organisms that um, 
can be present in our bodies and that's where they cause the damage when they when they they're actually either within our body or in contact with our skin so the main groupings and i touched on this before are the there's viruses there's parasites there's molds and fungi and there's also bacteria so what happens is when the ecosystem the microbiome which is like the ecosystems within our body become overridden by harmful external bacteria that come into our bodies and upset the the balance with our healthy bacteria so what tends what happens then is that there's more of the unhealthy bacteria and i'm using bacteria as an example because it's what we tend to focus on with digestive system. But when there's more unhealthy um, microbes than there are healthy microbes, then that is when this, we swing towards um, disharmony in our body and disease. So Now for our audience, Joanne Douglas Brown, can you explain what exactly is our microbiome? In different parts of our bodies, in our digestive system, we have a microbiome, which is this, it's, an, it's a finely tuned ecosystem that can react to very, very small changes. Things like your pH balance, if your diet is overly acidic and you have eating a lot of grain-based products, meats, dairy, your system is gonna be more acidic. Um, the big, there's a big push to encouraging people to eating more fruits and vegetables. They, they are naturally more alkaline foods. So acidity is one of the aspects that can affect our, our microbiome, the foods we eat, the stress that we experience in our lives. Um, other things that we, we take in, things like antibiotics can upset the balance. It can, um, basically clean our digestive systems of the good bacteria and also alcohol consumption. There's a number of different factors that can affect the, that finely tuned ecosystem that is within our digestive system. Another thing too is that, sorry, <laughs> you're about to ask me a question, but um, we have different ecosystems in different parts of our body. So our urinary tract has its own microbiome our mouth, our dental hygiene is also another factor that we need to consider. Right, now how does our microbiome and the health and balance of it affect our immune system? Well, when, when the harmful bacteria or the harmful um, microbes take over, they, they're, upsetting the natural balance we can become more stressed we can become um, less able to respond to stressful situations and our immune system is an integral part of how if, if our immune system is strong then we can withstand so much the human body is actually very um forgiving there's if if you can catch a condition early enough, you can turn things around, you can turn around the human health, you can reverse degeneration of cells and, um, you know, and other um, dysfunction in the human body. So a compromised microbiome, a digestive microbiome can lead to um, autoimmune issues and several other things. So um, there's a, it's a very good idea for us to, to look after our health, eat a balanced diet and, um, you know, to make sure that, that our bodies are functioning in the most optimal way. And so we're protecting our immune system and we're less susceptible to some of the really nasty um, diseases and infections that we can, can take hold. Right. Now, my understanding is that 70% of your immune system actually resides in your gut microbiome. And something that a lot of people don't understand is that your gut 
the microbiome actually manufactures 90% of your serotonin, over 90% actually. So yeah. when, you're, when this microbiome is out of balance, it affects your ability to recover from or withstand illness, and yeah. it affects your brain chemistry. So keep Absolutely. this microbiome in balance is a huge part of your mental health as well as your physical health. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Joanne Douglas Brown, how do heavy metals affect our health? Heavy metals, um, in my experience with the frequency therapies that I use, heavy metals are one of the very first things that we tend to focus on as practitioners because they upset the apple cart in a huge way. They, they're very disruptive. Um, they can cause so much damage to our detox organs, to our liver, to our kidneys. They, the thyroid is enormously affected by by mercury, for example. Um, we need selenium and zinc to help to offset that. Even, even the periodic table shows um, there's interactions with the periodic table. For example, zinc is, is a, a mineral that we absolutely need, it's essential. But what can happen is because both magnesium, sorry, both mercury and cadmium they sit in the same column as zinc, which means they have the same atomic structure. So if you're deficient in zinc, but you've got mercury amalgam, the body's gonna go, zinc, we're looking for zinc, where's the zinc? We don't have any zinc, but we have this other, we have this other metal that looks like zinc, so we can use that instead. So then zinc is particularly important for eliminating um, mercury and other heavy metals but if there's no zinc and the mercury has, is kind of entrenched and it's, it's kind of taken the place of zinc in the body then to eradicate mercury from the system is incredibly difficult so right there's a bit of a trade-off there it's as though the structure of mercury mimics the structure of zinc therefore it creates this double issue which further reduces our health and immunity and everything else. Right. Now, like you, I also look for heavy metals. And many people who are listening to this broadcast think, well, you know, I'm not eating 10 cans. However, if you have mercury amalgam fillings in your mouth, which are the most common kinds of fillings, these can actually leach into your mouth over time. And I have to tell yeah. this somewhat funny story. So as many of our audience know, I'm an author. And before I wrote books, I wrote plays. And at the time that I was writing plays, I actually wrote 12 plays and I had them performed off of Broadway in New York. This is funny. I had this weird habit that I wasn't able to write unless I was chewing gum. And when you chew, you're getting both sides of the brain going. And at the time I had mercury fillings so if I did a lot of writing, I was literally non-functional the next day because I was chewing and it was leaking yes. into my yes. mouth. And so yes. many people are really astonished how much their health, again, on all levels, physical, mental, et cetera, is affected by heavy metals. And, you know, there's also air pollution, but the the, uh, we've had on our natural sh healing show experts talk about dental health, which is a huge issue, right? Yeah. But the, just yeah. like parasites that can hide in any organ, you know, once you've been leaching heavy metals, they can be stored in any organ in your body and they Absolutely. really affect your brain. <laughs> yes. And yes, that's so true. I don't think there's a single part of the human body that is unaffected by heavy metals. And the one we are exposed to the most is mercury, given that somebody in their wisdom decided it was a good idea to put toxic metal in our mouth as, as an amalgam. Um, um, are there's other metals that I tend to find are, are really problematic for human health, the heavy metals and arsenic is, arsenic shows up a lot more than you would expect. 
Um, arsenic is naturally occurring in the soil and things like your rice, rice tends to absorb arsenic from the soil. So if you're not growing rice, if you're not eating rice that is grown in an organic environment, um, one way of, of reducing arsenic toxic load from arsenic is by reducing non-organic rice that, that you eat. There's also an affinity with sugar with the arsenic as well. So um, cadmium, lead, nickel and thallium are other, and, and copper in toxic copper can um, show up for a lot of people as well. And aluminum, and, and aluminum. Yes, from, oh, yes, of course. From aluminum pots, right? <laughs> I've got an interesting story about aluminum. My last set of glasses um, was, an aluminum frame. In Australia, we call it aluminium, and I've switched to a, a plastic frame, but there's also a lot of interaction with your metals and your bacteria and your parrot and your viruses, especially. But I found that I was getting these big pimples across the bridge of my nose, and I couldn't figure out why. And given the work that I do, you probably find the same thing. When something happens, it can be really frustrating if you can't figure out what it is. And I realized that the pimples were coming from the aluminum frame that I was wearing, my glasses frame. So Now, when people have high levels of heavy metals in the body, my favorite way to get rid of them is actually by encouraging people to use a far infrared sauna. And you can definitely do heavy metal chelation. You can do oral chelation. You can do IV chelation. IV chelation is extremely expensive. Oral chelation, when you take supplements I, uh, to get rid of the heavy metals, I think that can affect people's energy and mental health when it's all yeah. coming out. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, my favorite way is um, uh, encouraging people to use a far infrared sauna. How do you like people to get rid of heavy metals? Um, chlorella is something that I recommend to people. Things like your also zeolite, your diatomaceous earth. Um, and I also find that parasites tend to feed off, off heavy metals and store them. So even when, when you do a good um, parasitic cleanse, it can, uh, and as you would know with, with heavy metal detox, it tends to happen in stages. And you can think that you've gotten it all out, but um, it's something you, really need if you've had a history of heavy metal toxicity it's really something you need to do in stages over a period of time yeah i agree it takes a lot of energy to detoxify and a lot of people yeah. i feel are not healthy enough to detoxify right now yeah very good point now joanne douglas brown how can we tell whether or not our bodies are eliminating toxins properly um when we're eliminating properly we tend to feel good we're releasing we're releasing the, the nasties from our system and our bodies feel cleaner that's just a very simple answer but when we're not detoxing properly we tend to have things like yeah, i like considering the energy of either holding on or letting go and there can be parallels with emotional issues and you know things in our lives that are unhealthy for us that we don't want to release when you think about the fact when you think about constipation what's happening is our what the natural waste material that we need to release from our body is being retained within our body and it is festering and it's putrid and there's so many reasons why that's not good for us um, so your constipation is one of the first places I look at in terms of um, a symptom that demonstrates someone's not detoxing properly things like your headaches as well headaches tend to represent um, I work a lot with the meridians the gallbladder and the bladder meridians run over the head anytime somebody has a headache to here I usually find the gallbladder is implicated in some way 
the gallbladder is responsible, it's causing problems. It needs, it needs help detoxing along with its partner organ, the liver. Um, we can get acid reflux. That's another symptom that we can have when we're not detoxing properly. Um, the acid is building up in our body and we're not releasing that. We can have fatigue, we can have smelly bowel motions and our skin can be really dry. There are several of the symptoms that tend to show up. But um, when you think about, um, and the topic of bowel motions isn't the most popular, but it, a lot of it has to do with balance. And we we want to be eliminating once or even twice a day. That's healthy. Um, but a healthy bowel mo motion is not is neither watery or completely solid. It's it's somewhere in between. And there's things that we can pay attention to like that. When you consistently have diarrhea or consistently have constipation, it's a bit of a neon light saying something's not right here. So, you know, it's not normal. It's not normal to urinate 25 times a day. There's there's signals that our body gives us that things are out of balance. Right. Now, when we think about the organs of detoxification, these in court, of course include your large intestine, but it's also the liver, your gallbladder. Your skin is your largest organ of detoxification and also your lungs as well as your kidneys. So, you know, whenever anyone has skin problems and people sometimes come to me, they've I've got these weird rashes. I even had a client a couple of years ago whose skin was so bad her hands were bleeding, which was just Dude. so painful. And, you know, anytime you've got a skin problem, that's going to be a liver kidney issue where your liver and your kidneys are not eliminating properly. So mm -hmm. like you said, when we are eliminating properly, we feel great, right? And impaired detoxification is one of the three main risk factors for cancer. So we really want to make sure that all those organs of detoxification are working well. So, absolutely, jo yeah. Jo Joanne Douglas Brown, how can frequencies help us restore balance to our mind body system? And, you know, people talk about energy healing and frequencies. So, can you explain for our audience what are healing frequencies and how can they help us restore balance? Okay, I'm going to go into a little bit of background here. Um, I, anything related to energy, we can draw on. I like, I love drawing on traditional Chinese medicine, um, which has, which has for thousands of years worked with the meridian, meridian channels that run through our body. Um, the the information signals that that follow along those pathways. Um, there's also quantum physics that taps into that because Albert Einstein, um, the work of, of physicists over the years, Max Planck, um, we've learned over the years that that um, all matter is composed of energy and which has an energy field. So when you when you incorporate the, the knowledge from quantum physics and the knowledge from traditional Chinese medicine, there's a lot of evidence out there that that our, we are electrical beings. We are we have these electromagnetic fields and it actually makes a lot of sense on a scientific level that if you if you introduce a therapeutic frequency pattern into the body that it's only going to have positive effects. Um, one thing that's been found with degenerated cells that are defective and dysfunctional is that they they become disconnected from the other cells around the body. So when you introduce a frequency, it um, gives those degenerated, disconnected cells an opportunity to become part of the network again, part of a fully functioning system, a system of interconnection. And you know, there's analogies. Um, when I say analogies, it 
what tends to happen in the intuitive world is very similar to what happens in, in the physical world in terms of interconnection and that we, we are part of a, a collective. Um, yeah, so I found that the introduction of, of therapeutic frequencies, um, those that really resonate with the human body and those that are healthy can help to reconnect those cells and help to improve communication within our body and resulting in very positive outcomes. Um, they can be used to target specific areas. Like you were talking earlier about, you know, there are parasites that can, can affect our brain. We can tar specifically target the nervous system or the spleen or the liver or the kidney, depending on where the issue is. And we can be supporting those areas through carefully selected targeted frequency patterns and you know and get incredibly good results right now in natural healing there are ways of delivering healthy frequencies to the body there's hands-on healing modalities such as reiki when you visit a reiki practitioner they're emitting chi into your body and they're literally channeling healing energy there's homeopathy yeah. right and if you visited a homeopath, they would find um, they would find frequencies that would help balance out what's going on with you. There's flower essences. I use flower essences from all over the world. I love flower essences because yeah. they balance the mental, emotional, spiritual aspects. Yeah. 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 And Joanne Brown is nodding her head because you're whatever is going on with you at the soul level, mentally, emotionally is what literally holds that disease and the illness into place, right? So we've got yeah. hands-on healing modalities. We also have acupuncture, which is a way of balancing the energy in your body, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. here in the U.S., uh, I visited naturopaths who can imprint specific frequencies into remedies so that yeah. they'll imprint the re the frequency that are going to balance your body right yes yeah. it's incredible isn't it and that's all frequency based right so you know one of the things i'm always saying to my clients you're already a vip lots of people want to be rich and famous <laughs> at any rate we can not discuss that but you're already a vip because you're a vibrational interference pattern so joanne yeah. and i are both nice people but we have different energies, right? You have an energy that's absolutely as unique as your thumbprint, right? Absolutely, yes, yes. Right? And that's why those of us who are professional intuitives can read your energy anywhere, right? I just did mm -hmm. a medical intuitive reading two days ago. I didn't have a photograph of the gentleman. I had his name, address, and the name of the drug that he was taking. And I said mm -hmm. through a a report on him for an hour and a half. So, so Joanne Douglas Brown, how do you use frequencies to uh, restore balance to our mind body system of these different modalities that we've discussed? Uh, yes, well, um, my primary way of operating is, is with generating specific frequencies and working within certain frequency ranges. I use you were talking about infusing um, remedies with with specific frequencies as well. With this current pandemic, um, my local clients, I've been making up drops for them that are specifically for immune support, and that they that gives them layers of support just to strengthen their immune system, particularly the respiratory system, as given that that's particularly relevant at the moment. I also use um, the Australian Bushflower Essence range. They have yeah. a lot of customized blends. They're beautiful. And as you said, you know, kids who have nightmares, they're sp very specific of the individual remedies and I make up a customized blend for them using okay. those. I find them remarkable. Um, yeah, they, they help a lot of people with anxiety, depression. The, uh, the, the emergency essence is probably their most common it's it's probably similar to the rescue remedy from the bark flowers but it's um 
it's a beautiful kind of catch-all. Yeah. Yeah. I have an Australian bush flower remedy on my desk. And, you know, we've interviewed uh, the founder of the Australian bush flower essence oh. here on the natural healing show. And one of the remedies that I've been recommending quite a bit is tall yellow top and tall yellow top is for loneliness. And wow. it's something that a yeah. lot of people who are real are going through right now, you know, with all yeah. this physical separation from, you know, the, the par pandemic, the so-called social distancing, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, uh, Joanne Douglas Brown, is there any historical basis for using frequencies to support physical health? And even the ones that we've talked about, you know, energy healers, and you and I both do energy healing, you know, we'll, we'll admit she using color, right? And oh, color yes, yes. Frequencies. So, can you share with us this historical basis for using frequencies to support physical health? Um, you touched on something earlier about how each of us, we have our own vibrational patterns. Um, back in the 1920s, there was a very, very clever American scientist whose his name was Royal Wright. And he did a lot of experimentation. I can't imagine how laborious it would have been for him back then because he was working with um, specific frequencies that he was looking for the frequencies at which um, my very specific microbes resonated and also the frequencies at which he could destroy those, those same microbes. Um, and he discovered that each type of bacteria and virus and those particularly have their own characteristic life frequency. They have their specific frequency range that they can be um, activated at and they can be destroyed at which is was incredibly remarkable especially given the time period he was living in <laughs> he didn't have access but he created this amazing universal microscope that is has never been replicated um, and it used prisms it used um, yeah prisms that enabled the light path to to remain parallel anyway that was that's a very important scientific principle that had to that enabled this microscope to have the magnification that it that it had um he yes he also discovered that he could direct a beam of light at human tissue that contained viral material and that would basically destroy the viral material within the human tissue without damaging the human tissue which I think back in the 1920s would have been incredible. Now, following on from him, there was a Canadian naturopath. Her name was Holder Clark. I'm pretty sure she had German origins. Um, she's, her, all of her books have a very German feel to them. Um, but she followed on from his work and did a lot of experimentation herself and produced this enormous body of work from working hands-on with, with, with um, patients. And she also discovered that everything has its own signature frequency. Now, with the work that I do, um, that applies, it doesn't just apply to the microbial world, to the viruses, bacteria, parasites and molds. It also applies to your metals, your heavy metals, your pesticides, your, you know, any chemical combination. If you have dust allergy, we can use that frequency to help to neutralize your reactions to dust. You know, it, insects, you know, ticks, mosquitoes, it's, it just, it applies to everything that we have contact with. Um, Holder Clark discovered that she could eliminate the presence of different microbes by exposing the human body through metal bars. Um, that was zapper. attached to a frequency generator. Sorry, the zapper, a Holder Clark. Yes, zapper. yes, yes the zapper. Of, yes, for getting rid of parasites. Yes, that's right. But you can also you you can also introduce frequencies that promote detox as well. I've seen um, a video of a horse that's connected to a frequency generator, 
step out, um, whatever you want to call it. And this horse had urinary issues. And, you know, within 10 minutes after being um, exposed to that frequency to promote detox, the horse was able to detox. So it's quite remarkable. Right. And, you know, for our audience, you know, another historical precedent for this work is a, a spiritual author by the name of Dr. David Hawkins. So Dr. David Hawkins wrote a number of books. He was an enlightened person. He's now deceased. His first book and his seminal book is called Power Versus Force. And in that book, he basically explains that everyone and everything has a level of consciousness. So again, it's that vibrational interference pattern that we talked about. And I like to joke with my clients that your level of consciousness is kind of like your GPA in college. Maybe you were good at English, but not so good at physics. And, you know, then, you know, you had an average, right? And um, so, again, you know, we, we started talking about the microbiome. So, you know, you think of yourself as a human being. Well, there's all these organisms living in your body, and hopefully you're in harmony with them, right? But at any rate, so Dr. Hawkins, he came up with this scale of consciousness. If you go to my website, Unlimited Energy Now, and go to media free downloads, you can download this chart. And many in, of us in natural healing have correlated physical illnesses with different vibratory patterns. So for example, fear is mm -hmm. at the level of 100. Okay, and there's specific illnesses that correspond to that. Of course, anxiety, but also things like obesity, <laughs> right? Yeah. And thyroid disease is, you know, at the level of shame. So there are people who have correlated specific frequencies with specific illnesses. And, you know, it's a sp spiritual principle that you want to raise your vibration. How do you raise your vibration? Think positive thoughts, pray, meditate, eat well, perform acts of service, <laughs> be happy, <laughs> right? And all illness, no matter whether it's a virus or a bacterial infection, all illnesses slow down vibration. And mm -hmm. all healing happens when you lift your vibration. Yeah, yeah. So Joanne yeah. Douglas Brown, what exactly is a Rife machine? So you talked about the founder of the Rife machine. What is this Rife machine? Um, a Rife machine, um, you could also call it a frequency generator or a, or a zapper. They're all pretty much interchangeable. What, what it does is it produces low energy electromagnetic waves and that's introduced into the body. And you can be, it can be, typically it's introduced through the hands or the feet. Um, that is where a lot of our meridians either start or end. So you can impact you can impact so much of the body through either the hands or the feet um, because of the you know just that's the there's an enormous concentration of your um, meridians there. Um, the right machine can be used for a whole range of different conditions. I've got a girlfriend and she's from South Africa. She grew up with a Rife machine and that's her go-to with her family. You know, if one of the kids has got a sore throat, she'll put them on the Rife machine. And she's had fantastic success with that over the years. Um, and, you know, I've seen both zappers and Rife machines used effectively for detox, for shifting parasites. It's um, for kids who are a bit reluctant to take any form of parasite cleanse. A zapper is not a bad thing because you can have them sitting in front of their favorite TV show while they're while you're sending a therapeutic frequency into their into their system to help support their little bodies. So they they can be very valid useful tools. Right. And one thing that we know for a fact, scientific fact, is that everything again everything's a frequency. A drug is a frequency. A uh, naturopathic supplement is a free frequency and natural healing remedies a frequency and you can either give the person the drug the remedy or the frequency it will all work right yeah 
Yeah. yeah. And, and many of my clients, they are tired of taking a lot of pills, right? <laughs> so yeah. frequencies are another way of doing it. Now, Joanne Douglas Brown, how does the work of Hulda Clark still inform us today? Um, well, I touched earlier on the fact that Hulda Clark had this enormous body of research and she's, um, she's written, she wrote several books while she was still alive. Um, yeah, the unfortunately, cure for, she, the, the cure for all diseases is one of them. The cure, yes, for all and that is my favorite book. It is something I refer to, um, especially if I'm a little bit stumped with a client. It gives me a really good place because a lot of people have autoimmune issues and they can have layers of dysfunction within their body. So sometimes it um, it's helpful to have a starting point. I have several protocols that I work from with my frequency work, but Holder Clark has gone through and basically identified different microbes, different um, toxins that contribute to different conditions. It's a bit of a checklist, um, especially with, with my clients who have had fertility issues. She identifies specific parasites and different bacteria that can be present in the reproductive system that can prevent um, the regular reproductive um, cycle from, from occurring. So, yeah, I found her work enormously helpful for myself in, as a practitioner working with, with my clients. But, yeah, her, her books, I have it, one of them in a PDF form because it's just super easy to search for specific information. But um, yeah, she com also compiles um, several pathogen frequency charts that identifies the frequency range that you can neutralize a pathogen. And when I say pathogen, I mean microbe. They're interchangeable words. So Right. Absolutely. And in a nutshell for our audience, Holly Clark believed that toxicity and parasites were two of the major factors in all disease. And so by, you know, detoxifying, getting rid of parasites, everything gets better. And I, I know Joanne Douglas, Brown and I totally agree with that, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So we started talking about parasites, you know, and the thing about parasites is that there's over a thousand different kinds of parasites, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I tell my clients, I said, well, think of trees. <laughs> there's lots of trees. There's trees in the US, there's trees in England, there's trees in Australia. And there's so many different kinds of parasites. So Joanne Douglas Brown, how do you recommend your clients get rid of parasites? Mm -hmm. One of the one of the important things I think we need to realize about parasites is, <coughs> I mean, is that each of them has a life cycle, and that life cycle extends for a certain period of time. Um, they have different stages of development. They start as larvae. They, um, I'm sorry, they start as eggs. The adults lay eggs. Then the eggs hatch, become larvae and then they grow into adult males and females. So, <coughs> sorry. So to eliminate parasites, you need to eliminate them at every stage of their life cycle. You need to eliminate the eggs, the larvae, the adult males, the adult females, because if there are any present, they are going to reproduce. Um, and this is where a lot of people come unstuck is because they're not necessarily willing to stay the distance and take an effective parasite cleanse for the length of time that covers the life cycle, which in my experience can range from four weeks to, to up to three months. So um, what I tell my clients is that it's 120 days. So, you know, yeah. it's four months, right? And yes. I've seen so yes. many clients over the years and the, something, someone told them years ago they had parasites. They did a parasite cleanse for, you know, they, they bought it at the health food store. They did it for two weeks and they're still sick because they didn't yeah. get rid of all of that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, here in Australia, we have these little one-off doses that are distributed through the pharmaceuticals, you know, through the pharmacies, the chemists. And they 
they target the adult parasites, but they don't target the earlier stages. Um, and if you're if you're effectively going to eradicate parasites, you need to be killing them all at all of those stages. Um, I also wanted to touch on the fact that it's really helpful to know where the parasites have come from. And I want to use pork parasites as an example because there are three particular parasites that are present in pork. One of the reasons for that is because you can't, um, a lot of people don't cook pork at a high enough temperature to kill the parasites. Um, Trichinella spiralis is probably the main pork parasite that I find with my clients. It's particularly an issue because it tends to mirror viral symptoms. So it's, um, it's the legs, the eggs are laid by the adult trichinella and they're transported through the blood system to the muscle cells. From the muscle cells, the eggs hatch and they're in a spiral shape. And as they grow, they cause pain because they're, they're located between the muscle cells. Right. You've been listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can be healthy naturally. Our guest today has been the wonderful Joanne Douglas Brown of Queensland, Australia, and intuitive. You can find out more about her wonderful work at joedouglasbrown.com. And remember, when you identify and clear the hidden factors affecting your health, you can feel absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.